Hello fellow mathematicians, today I happen to come out with a new clip on Gibbs rotation method and QR decomposition. My name is Isaac Amanda to you too. We are still in the business of QR decomposition. In my previous videos, I look at the QR decomposition with Gronsmith and then the, and then the household transformation. Let's now dive into the Gibbs rotation matrix method and the QR decomposition. So this QR, this Gibbs rotation method is one of the methods that is also used to decompose the matrix into Q and our R, <coughs> of which our Q has to be a unitary matrix, and then our R happens to have to be a right upper triangular matrix. When you multiply the matrix back, you have to get your original matrix A. And this rotation is said to have been obtained by a span of vectors, okay? A span of coordinates in the plane, which we'll look at it into details. In general, we can view the given rotation matrix as this, which we have our G of I, J, and theta. And theta happens to give us a fair idea that we'll be dealing with angles. Here we'll be dealing with angles, angles, and angles. So this given rotation matrix, for us to obtain this given rotation matrix, we have to compute our C and our S. So how then do we do that? We first of all, have give, having opt, been given this vector that's what x and y you can now fall on x and uh, this vector with the element x and y to obtain our cos theta which is our c and our sine theta which is our s so our cos theta can be computed as what x and y and our sine theta should be can be computed as well minus y on r. Our r is the length of this vector that we have seen here. So having obtained your c and your s, we just compute it, substitute it into this very matrix here, and it will give you your Gibbs rotation matrix. When you apply it to our vector back, you will get the length of this vector, and then beneath the our R will get what zero. Let's see how it actually works in practicality. So, given this matrix that we happen to see here, that, that is our A, we want to apply the given rotation matrix to, to decompose it, okay, into Q and our R. So, we now look at our first step. In our first step, we have to identify our x and our y. So from the matrix that we happen to he see here, we want to delete all the elements beneath, beneath the first diagonal element. That is our that is four and three. And when you come here to also want to delete this very element here. So in the first step, we identify our x to be zero and our y to be four. That is what is seen as here. That's what we have seen here. And we then find the length of our x and y, find the norm of it, and it happens to give us what? Four. We then find our cos theta, which is zero, and our sine theta minus one. We substitute it into the first given rotation matrix under three by three. And then we happens to get this nice matrix here, this rotation here. We pre-multiply to our A, which is our A1 is the original A matrix that we have seen. When you do so, it happens to get a new, a different matrix altogether. We now go ahead to, we now go ahead to find a means of deleting our, these very elements beneath, these very elements beneath the first diagonal element. So to do so, we identify our x again as 4, 
then our y to be 3. And every element that is identified to be y will be the very element that we want to delete. So from our h2 again, we say we want to delete these three. So our x is 4, our y is 3. Find the length of it, which gives us 5. And then our cos theta becomes 0 0.8, and our sine theta becomes a negative 0 0.6. We substitute it into the second given rotation matrix, which subsists, and our g2 becomes this very nice matrix that we have seen here. We print multiply to our A2 matrix. A2 matrix will give us our A3 matrix. So within two steps, we are able to delete all the elements within the first diagonal element or first the first pivot element. Beneath the first pivot element. Yeah. <laughs> so having obtained our A3, we still want to go ahead and delete these very two this element beneath the second pivot element. So we then identify our x to be equal to 1 and our y to be equal to 2. So once we identify y to be 2, meaning that very element is going to run to 0. We find the length of x and y, which is our r, and they give us this very value here. Our cos theta becomes 0 0.4467, and our sine theta becomes 0. Zero, negative 0 0.894 we then construct our g3 matrix here and then we substitute the c and the x value and we got our g3 we pre multiply our g3 to our a3 matrix and eventually we happens to obtain our we happens to obtain our a4 but in this sense, our A4 matrix becomes the right upper triangular matrix that we are. We are that is under consideration. So having then obtained our right upper triangular matrix, we then want to find out how can we get our Q, which is the unitary matrix that we are interested in. And it is pretty simple. Let's see how to do it. Now in the preview, in the first step one, we have it to obtain our G1 matrix. We transpose it with this very one. We have it to, in the step two, we obtain G3, G2 matrix. We transpose it, which is this very matrix that we see here. And our final step, we obtain G3, we transpose it, and it's also this very matrix that we have to see here. When you multiply all these three matrices, we get our Q matrix which is the unitary matrix or the orthogonal matrix under consideration. When we multiply our Q and our R, we will get back our original matrix A. This method has several applications. It's used to solve problems under systems of equations. We finally arrive at our Q and R matrices. This is an end of this lesson. And then if this video happens to be of help to you, I will kindly recommend that you, you like, comment, and share this video. But don't forget to, to subscribe to this channel. Thank you. And we'll be expecting from, to hear from you. Enjoy your day. Bye.